two bonus easy recipes. We're going to be making some southern cornbread and for that southern cornbread, some pork neck bone dressing. Oh, yeah. So stay tuned. Hey guys, it's your girl Shella, P R O M O S T K, Shella's Creations Way. And I'm making some good old homemade cornbread, some good old southern cornbread, y'all. Come on, get some. All right, check it out. Hey Here guys, we go. Hey guys, it's your girl Shella, P R O M O S T K, Shella's Creations Way. And I'm going to be making some good old southern cornbread. Oh, yeah, these are the ingredients. We got some milk, we got some water, we got some cooking oil. We got some Himalayan salt, black pepper, four eggs, sugar, corn. And flour. Oh, yeah. Hey guys, we're gonna be making some cornbread. Y'all saw the ingredients, and we're gonna be making this to go with our good old lima beans. Lima beans, lima beans, lima beans. So, we gotta have some cornmeal. Let me go ahead and pour some cornmeal in here, and I'll say about maybe two cups to three cups of cornmeal, depending on how much you plan on making of your cornbread, but at least between two to three cups. We're gonna add our flour, and this is self-rising flour. I already had a little flour in the bowl, so we're gonna add about a cup of flour. We'll add a cup of flour to the three cups of cornmeal, okay? Let me put y'all a little bit lower, there we go. We're gonna add my sugar, cause y'all, you know, a little bit of sugar to your cornbread. So about two tablespoons of sugar. And it just adds a flavor to it. It does not make it sweet at all. It just adds a nice, nice flavor. A nice flavor to it. So we're done with the cornmeal. We're done with the flour. Let's put it out of the way. Get that out of the way real fast and in a hurry. All right. Now. What we'll do now is, because this is all dry ingredients, we're gonna take and stir those dry ingredients up. And the self rising flour already has salt in it, but I will add just a little bit more because as we start adding these ingredients, it will take some of the saltiness away from the flour and we wanna put a little bit back into it. So about a tablespoon of salt, and then you'll taste it before you add your eggs to make sure you have enough of that salt to taste. Some black pepper. Sometimes I add black pepper to my um, cornmeal, sometimes I don't, but it does give it a, a different type of flavor. It adds a little richness to your cornbread. I do have my pan already over here that I'm gonna be putting my cornbread in. I'm gonna go ahead and pour my cooking oil in there because that's gonna be, um, that's gonna coat that pan. Now, before I add my eggs, I'm gonna go ahead and put my cooking oil in my, my mix right here. So about two to three tablespoons of cooking oil you're gonna add. We're gonna do both milk and water to my cornbread. So we'll go ahead and add about two cups of milk. And I have two cups of water on the side. So we'll add the water to it as it needs it but we do have two cups of water on the side that will go in here as well. Okay. So once you get that flour inside here, along with the cornmeal wet, you go ahead and add the rest of the water a cup at a time. That's one cup. I've always seen my mom do this with her hand. So I really, really, really love just getting in here and doing it with my hand versus using a mixer. Whatever your preference is, if you guys want to use a mixer, you can, you can mix her. All right. So I'll add the, a little bit more and just get the little feel of how the consistency is with your cornmeal. Okay, now. I'm gonna give it a little tasty taste. Let me do a little fold in it real quick. And I'm gonna give it a little taste to see if I need to add anything else to this. Let's see. No? That's perfect. So now, 
So as you see, it's still water left. So I may not even have to use that a little bit of that's left. We'll go ahead and crack our four eggs in here. Now you don't want to crack your eggs in here until you taste it to make sure that it doesn't need anything else. So those are four eggs. Let me go ahead and get rid of this and put it in the trash. Let me wash my hands real quick. Now we're gonna break those yolks. And once you break those yolks, you're just gonna go ahead and mix it up. Sure at this point in time you get those eggs incorporated. And again, you're gonna put this in the oven on about 350 for about an hour. I like my cornbread a little crusty. Uh, that's why I'm putting it in the large pan so it'll lay more flatter. If you want your cornbread to be uh, more fluffier to more cakeish consistency, then you just get a smaller pan. That's the only difference. Just get a smaller pan. All right. And it looks like it needs to look. You see this? Now see that consistency? That's about how you want it to look. Okay. Now, before I put my cornbread mix in the pan, I let it sit for about five minutes. So I'm gonna let this cornbread sit for about five minutes before I add it to the pan to bake. All right? And we'll see you back in five minutes. But to you, it'll only be a second. All right, you guys, it's been five minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour the mix into my pan. And I already have it oiled. As you can see, it's probably about a quarter cup of oil that I have in here because not only do I want this cornbread to bake, but I want it to fry. So I'm gonna make sure I got this pan completely coated. Again, I not only want this to bake, I want it to fry, okay? So now I'm gonna pour my cornbread mix in here in my bowl, from my bowl. Give it another little stir because I've been sitting for about five minutes. Just pour it in there. Okay. And again, we're going to put it in an oven for about uh, 350 or 375, whichever one, depending on your temperature. Some ovens get hotter than the others, but you want it at least 350, all right? Let's do a little shaky shake. As you can see, you see it sitting in that oil, and that's exactly what you want it to do. All right, so we're gonna put this in the oven, and we'll see you in a few. Oh, yeah. All right, you guys, so cornbread is done. Oh, look at that. Look at that cornbread, yeah. All right, let's take, let's take it over here. Let's take it over here. Look at that cornbread, y'all. Mm, mm, mm. And that's that good old cornbread you also can use to make your cornbread dressing as well. Oh, yeah. Hey, you guys, come on in and watch step-by-step step how I make this new recipe. Pork neck bone cornbread dressing created by promo stk you guys come on in step by step this is the first time i've ever seen this done and it was by promo stk these are the ingredients and let's get into this awesome new recipe 
please comment below comment 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 and let me see what you gotta say about it and if anybody else has made it let me know hey guys it's your girl Shella P-R-O-M-O-S-T-E-K Shella's Creations Way and guess what you guys I got myself another new recipe I haven't seen anybody do it it is pork neck bone dressing do y'all hear what I say pork neck bone dressing oh yeah made Shella's Creations Way and you saw it here first at Promo SCK Shella's Creations Way and go over to Promo SCK eating good in the neighborhood and watch us mukbang it but in the process keep on watching and you'll see just how I create this dish I'm back and right here as you see are my fresh neck bones I'm gonna wash these and then get them in the oven with all these good seasonings so if you and then also right here is some cornbread that I had made up and I froze it so I just took it out let it set out so it can defrost and I'm gonna use this for my cornbread for our pork neck bone cornbread dressing oh yeah all right, you guys, we're back. We've washed off our neck bones. Now we're gonna get to the seasonings. Oh, yeah. We're gonna get to the good old seasonings. As you guys saw in the beginning, those were the ingredients. I'm gonna add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. It wasn't there when I took the picture at first, but it's here now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, and just go around and add my dry ingredients. And the first one I'm gonna add is celery seed, celery seed. About a, a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of celery seed, some soul food seasoning. Cause when you're dealing soul food, you gotta have soul food seasoning y'all. No way around it. Okay. And then we're gonna put some black pepper. A tablespoon full of black pepper. And you're gonna get some chopped chives. And we're gonna cut up some green onion. Let's slide it out of the way. And we also have two regular onions that we're gonna we're going to um, juice. Okay, so now we're going to cut these. ASMR with this cutting sound. Some of you guys enjoy that. And we're going to use this whole stalk of this green onion. stems off and we're gonna juice the onion with this and we're gonna use the entire onion I'm just taking and cutting it in halves now I can get the skin off you guys wanna fast forward you're free to fast forward I'm just gonna just pull the onion skins off and get this part and start it oh yeah
sauce. And for you guys that dibble dabble with these onions, to get that onion scent off, if you got a lemon around, just take that lemon and swirl it around in your hand after it's done. And that lemon scent will come right on off. All right, let's get these babies zest. All right. I say just zest, juice, all the goodness of this onion is gonna come off in here. And then of course we're gonna use all of this, these two small onions. But we're gonna first get as much juice off of it as we can. And y'all can watch me do that. You guys, welcome again to Fast Forward. This is what I'm going to be doing with these four halves of the onion. I might just fast forward this part. All right, so now we're gonna just dice up the rest of the onions that's left. Now what we're going to add now is the Worcestershire sauce, which is this right here. So like about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. powdered chicken bouillon, okay? We're gonna add one of these packs, just one of these packs, okay? There we go. And then we're gonna mixy, mixy. Make sure all that good old onion get all in the meat. for about four hours. Four hours of 450. Check it at three hours. If you 
let it cook to four hours, that's fine. It's just gonna be even more tender because what we're gonna do with this meat is we're gonna break it off the bone and we're gonna put it in our dressing. So, at least we're gonna put it in our cornbread. So I'm gonna go ahead and line the pan up. And let me show you how this meat looks. I mean, doesn't that look pretty? It's raw. I tell Adrian cooking food review, I tell him he makes his raw meat look yummy. So I hope I make my raw meat look yummy to you guys too. So we're gonna lay these in the pan. These are some, these are some big pork, big pork McDonald's. So we're gonna put them all in this pan. So make room. Make room for your neighbors. Make room for your friends. Cause y'all all gonna be in the party together. All right. Now, we're gonna take all this goodness and just sprinkle it on top. Sprinkle it on top. All this goodness. Get about a quarter cup of water. A quarter cup of water, you guys. Let me do that now. Because this meat is going to make its own juice. Own real broth. So we're going to pour that in there. Yeah. Quarter cup. We're gonna do now is we're gonna take our, we got like about three tablespoons to so maybe four tablespoons of butter. And we're just gonna put little packs here and there inside. She spread it all over. And remember there's no salt, no salt went in here at all. No salt at all. All these seasonings that we put in there, it's gonna be enough salt for flavor. Alright, now Let's get the lid on here. you guys I'm back the meat is still in the oven what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my cornbread and I'm gonna go ahead and get that all broken up I'm gonna go ahead and put my cornbread in here this is two um, small little pans of, of um, cornbread still frozen but that's okay we're gonna break it up okay so that's all you're gonna do with the cornbread you're just gonna break it up crumble it I like to get it Break this up, you guys. Break it up. Make sure it's all crumbs. You don't want to see any 
big pieces. You want to see it all broken up. Okay, now Y'all welcome to fast forward this part. Maybe I will fast forward it for you. But we're gonna break all this up. Now, as you can see, this pan is almost full with this cornbread. So we're gonna actually take some of it out before we add our meat in it because we don't want it to overflow. We wanna make sure that the meat gets all in there. I may use a bigger pan. That's what I might use because I wanna do everything in one pan. So you may see me change and get a larger pan. So we'll see you back. When we're ready to put the meat and all that good old meat goodness, that meat liquor in here. And that's those pork neck bones. What a pork neck bone dressing. Yes, you heard it and you saw it right here first on Promo SDK, Shell's Creations Way. All right, you guys, so I just took out the oven. We're gonna take a look at it. And then we'll put it back in the oven for about another hour. So let's take a look at it and see what we see what we're working with, y'all. And again, these are the pork neck bones. Okay. Ooh, look at that. Mm, 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 mm. Look at that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Y'all see that? That's what we want to see these neck bones looking like. Okay. So we're gonna. Put these back in the oven for about maybe 15, 20 more minutes. Let them cool. And then we're gonna add them to our cornbread. Oh yeah. Because we're gonna make, guess what? Do y'all remember what we're gonna make? Pork neck bone cornbread dressing. Oh yeah. All right, you guys, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take the cornbread and we're gonna do half and half in each pan. Half and half. Make sure they're both even. So that looks about, that looks about even. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna pretty much add our pork neck bone juice. All that meat liquor. Some is our some is already cooled off. So I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to pour some of that in here. Let me go grab it. All right, you guys. So I'm gonna pour the first batch in here that I had cooling. this over there to the side and then I'm gonna pour the next bit of the juice in this one so you want to add at least about a cup to start at least a cup to start because you want to get that cornbread wet And then you'll keep adding the meat liquor, I call it, until you get it all 
mix in and, it's, and it does not look dry. all I'm doing you guys I'm just taking the meat here taking the meat off these bones just taking the meat off the bones so once I'm done taking the meat off the bones I'll be back and show you the rest of the process all right you guys so I took about three of those um, those um, pork neck bones I took about three of them and broke them up between the two. And now I'm going to combine both together. So let's get this in there. And then once we put all this together in the one pan, we're going to let it bake for about 35 minutes an hour because this is already done. We just want everything to say happily married matrimony. So we're going to mix all this up. Mm. I tell you, I think I'm the first one to create this dish and I'm calling it pork neck bone dressing. Now y'all let me know if y'all know somebody else has done it before. I searched Google after I thought about it. I'm like, I'm going to make this. And Sheila Kez, that is my twin twin, the one that sponsored the uh, neck bone meal that you guys saw and that we premiered. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be creative. That's what we're here. We're all here. We're content creators. And even if you're a supporter, you still are creative. So I want to bring you guys something that's, you know, a little off the beaten path. All right. So here you have it. And now it's going to bake in the oven for about an hour. You see the consistency of that? That's what you want to see. Anytime you're making dressing, you want to see some type of consistency of it moving like that because it's going to firm up. And you don't want it to firm up dry. You want it to firm up and still be moist. You'll see what I'm talking about once it's coming up the oven. All right, see you in a few when we put it all together. Oh, and if I didn't tell you, put the lid back on it when you put it in the oven to bake. Okay? Put the lid back on it. And then you'll check it in about 35 minutes or 45 minutes. You'll check it. And then you'll take the lid off and then it'll stay off. All right. All right, you guys. So I just took the dressing out of the oven. We're going to take a look at it. See, it needs to stay in there a little longer. So far, it's been in there for about 40 minutes, between 35, 40 minutes. So let's check it out. See how it's starting to brown? Now it goes in the oven for about 20 more minutes. 20 more minutes without the lid. All right, we'll be back. 
All right, you guys, this is a feature of the hour. Pork neck bone dressing. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look, I want you to see that. Mm. Now, I want you guys to come over to the table with us at Promo SDK. Eating good in the neighborhood. And I want y'all to try it with us and see how it turns out. See at the table. You saw this made first at Promo SDK, Shellos Creations Way. All right, you guys, I'm getting ready to serve it up on the plate. Look at that. Mmm, you see that? Oh, yeah. See you guys at the table. Thank you.